G'day, welcome along to this next AWS Amplify Days session, Transforming GraphQL. My name is Rob Costello, and I'm a solution architect for AWS based in Canberra, Australia. In this session, we're going to be exploring the GraphQL Transform feature. This feature can help you accelerate your application development and integrate security and performance optimization features into your apps. We're going to do a quick overview of Amplify, and then we're going to dive into that GraphQL transform feature. We're going to explore how a data modeling approach can be used to speed up your application development, as well as automate some of your infrastructure deployment requirements. We're going to walk through some GraphQL transform directives that you'll commonly use when you're getting started building Amplify-based apps. Amplify is there to help you as a developer build and deploy mobile and web-based apps that leverage the AWS cloud. It's there to help you get to market fast. We work with popular frameworks like React, React Native, Vue, Angular, and others, and we provide a set of UI components as well as libraries that you can use to build and integrate cloud-hosted APIs in your apps. This lets you focus on innovation. You can focus on building features and functions inside your apps that add value to your business and to your customers. By leveraging AWS managed services as part of your apps, you're using those proven AWS building blocks that can meet the high security and the high performance needs that you're going to have as your customer base increases. So what's Amplify made up of? There are several parts to it. First, we have the CLI. The CLI is there to help you set up and update your application as you're developing. It walks you through the process of adding and integrating AWS cloud services into your apps. We also have the open source libraries for JavaScript, Swift, Kotlin, and other languages, which encapsulate functionality for useful patterns for things like authentication, APIs, or data storage. These libraries go hand in hand with our CLI. We also have the hosting service, Amplify Console. The Amplify Console is there as a fully managed hosting service for your full stack serverless web applications. It includes integrated CI/CD capabilities and it's there to help you get started hosting and delivering your apps fast. As I said, the CLI is there to help you set up and to configure your app. You'll always start a new Amplify project with the Amplify init command. After that, you'll add resources or services to your app using the Amplify add command. Once you've done this, you will push your resources into the cloud using the Amplify push command. This sets up resources using CloudFormation templates in your account. Over time, you'll iterate and change the configuration of your app, and you want to use the Amplify update command to change some of those configurations. When you're building GraphQL-based apps, the GQL compile command is quite useful. It lets you compile a set of resources locally on your development workstation so that you can see what's changed before you push into the cloud. You can also use the Amplify mock command, which lets you test and debug your apps locally before you push them into the cloud. The last useful command here is the environment command. This lets you support a team-based workflow or even add multiple environments so that you can support a multiple lifecycle development model. Because we're talking about GraphQL today, there's a natural link between Amplify and AWS AppSync, our fully managed GraphQL service. Amplify makes it really easy to define and deploy all of the AppSync-based configurations that you're going to need, such as data sources and resolvers. It also helps with the supporting services like Cognito and DynamoDB. As we go on through this session, we're going to see how AppSync and Amplify work together. The GraphQL Transform Library basically provides a simple abstraction so that you can quickly create backends for your web and mobile applications. Amplify includes a set of custom GraphQL directives that you can use to add these features to your applications, things like authentication and data storage. 
With the GraphQL transform library, what you do is create a data model using the GraphQL schema definition language. This GraphQL schema is translated by Amplify into a set of fully descriptive cloud formation templates that you can use to deploy your backend resources in the cloud. When you're creating this GraphQL schema, you'll need to think about a few things. You'll need to think about the types of data you want to store and the fields on those types. You'll want to think about the connections or relationships between your data. You'll need to think about the access patterns, how you want to query your data, as well as any security restrictions that you want to overlay on your data model. Once you understand these things, you can define your schema and attach the GraphQL directives from Amplify. From there, Amplify can do that translation and convert to CloudFormation and push your resources into the cloud. So what are some of these GraphQL transform directives? Well, there are several of them. We're only going to focus on a few of them today. The first one is the model directive. This lets us define a data structure. This essentially maps to a DynamoDB table in our account. It also lets us create the data source in AppSync that we need to connect between our client and our backend. We also have the connection directive. This allows us to create relationships between our different models. The auth directive is there to allow us to overlay authorization rules on our data. This maps to how an authentication service like Cognito can be used to allow access to different types of data within our data store. Lastly, we have the key directive. This allows us to create a custom index structure for our models. What this does is, is maps to a global secondary index in DynamoDB, so that we can perform efficient and performant queries on our data. So let's have a look at some of these directives and how they can be used in a GraphQL schema. We'll start with a very basic type of album. And this type has a model directive attached to it. This tells Amplify that it needs to create a DynamoDB table. We also have some fields attached to this type, ID and name. And you'll note that the ID field has an exclamation mark at the end. This denotes it as being mandatory. This field will also be used as our primary key in our DynamoDB table. Over time, you'll build more complex data structures and add other types to your application. In this example, we've added another type called image with a model um, directive attached to it. This tells Amplify again to create another DynamoDB table. We've also attached the connection directive in the album type. This tells Amplify that we need to establish a relationship between those two different types so that when a user queries for an album, they can also retrieve data from the image table. The auth directive lets us overlay an authorization strategy on our data model. We can do this with a few different attributes of the auth directive. The auth strategy defines the scope of access that we want to allow for our particular model. In this case, we're using the owner allow scope, but we also have other scopes available to us. Groups, private and public are all valid. We can also define the authentication provider that we want to use. We can use API keys, IAM, OIDC, or Cognito user pools. It's important to note that Amplify and AppSync allow us to define multiple authentication providers. This is useful in scenarios like when a client application would have Cognito user pools for the front end authentication. But in the back end, we might have Lambda functions that want to interact with our GraphQL API. Here we can use IAM to authorize that access. Another attribute is the model operations. This is where our CRUD attributes are defined, create, read, update, delete. The example here is quite simple, but by combining strategies, providers, and operations, we can actually build a really complex and robust attribute or role-based access strategy over the top of our data model. Once we've defined this in our schema, Amplify then tr translates all of our schema into our CloudFormation templates and other assets and deploys them to the cloud. 
One of the things Amplify does for us with the auth directive is creates the resolver mapping templates that are required in AppSync to validate requests. These templates are in the VTL language, Velocity Templating Language. And you can see here what we're doing with that request from the previous page is we're validating that the username sent through from the identity claim from a client matches the owner field in the data. If there is a match, then the user is authorized to request the data and the data can be returned to the client. The next one we need to look at is the key. We've defined our data model, we have a DynamoDB table, and we've set some integrated security with authorization rules. And now we want to figure out how to optimize our searching and querying of our data. By using the key directive, we're integrating a global secondary index into our DynamoDB table. We do this so that we can efficiently query our table. Often, we want to query for data that's outside of the default primary index. If we don't have global secondary indexes, then we're having to resort to scans of our tables, which can be costly in terms of price and performance and user experience. So we want to integrate those global secondary indexes. In this example, we're using a key directive. Let's explore what those uh, fields on that key directive are. That key directive has four different attributes attached to it. The first one is the name. The name is optional, but it's important to note that if we don't provide a name for our key, we're telling Amplify that we want to overwrite the default primary index for our global uh, for our DynamoDB table. It's important to give it a name so that we're sure we're creating a global secondary index. The next attribute is the fields attribute. Here we define the set of fields in our data type that we want to include in our global secondary index. We can have one or more fields here. The first field becomes the partition key. The second field becomes the sort key. If we have more than two fields, the second and subsequent keys are concatenated automatically by Amplify. Finally, we have the query field. That lets us define the name of the GraphQL query that we're going to run from our client to query this index. Why would we want to create more than two fields in a global secondary index? In that previous example, I had the owner status and created at fields as part of that global secondary index. What this is allows us to do is to create different combinations of queries, more granular queries that we can run from our client against our DynamoDB table. Based on those fields that we provided, we could search by owner, we could search by owner and status, or we could search by owner, status, and created date. This allows more uh, flexible and robust querying from our client and makes sure that those queries are um, optimized on our back end so that we don't have to transfer large amounts of data over the wire and we don't have to do lots of client side uh, filtering. So, what does this look like? How does this get translated into a DynamoDB query? Well, Amplify does half of the heavy lifting for us. It creates those resolver VTL code in AppSync that's required to validate that a request is coming through for a global secondary index for a key and that all of the required fields have been included in the query. If this is um, all worked out, then the VTL code will construct the query that gets sent to the DynamoDB table. So I've used the um, album type as a bit of an example, and obviously this would relate to some kind of album app. This album app would do things like perhaps store a list of albums that a user has, allow that user to share publicly their list of albums or some of their albums, and it would allow other users to like albums that someone else has. In our GraphQL schema, we would start with something like this, our album type again with our auth rule for owner allow, and our ID, name, and owner attribute fields on our type. This is a good start. But if we want our users to be able to query for their own albums efficiently, without putting a global secondary index in, we're going to have to return all of the data items in the table and at the client filter out based on the owner attribute. Here you can see we've added a by owner index or key. 
and we've included the fields owner and name. What this does is allow us to do a query called list albums by owner against the by owner global secondary index and specify the owner name and only return those data items from the DynamoDB table. Here you can see an example of that query. I'm selecting just uh, albums that I own and returning them in a descending order. At this point, we'll just make the note that um, we can specify the default query attributes for GraphQL here. Filter is something that we can use, but we don't often use. The sort direction, as you can see there, we can limit the number of responses that are returned to us. And also we can use the next token field. We can do this when we're returning batches of records back to our client so that we can implement pagination features in our apps. Another feature that we might want to implement is likes. Here we're going to extend our schema once again to include a likes field on our album type. We've also added a by likes key here. And this includes the owner field and the number of likes and specifies a query field of list by likes. Now we can do a query with some conditions on the likes to return only the number of albums that we want. Here you can see we're constructing a, a query from our client side for list by likes. We're searching for albums from me, Rob Cost. We're doing a conditional query on likes greater than 50. So I want albums with the number of likes greater than 50. Sort that list in a descending order and only return the first 10. This gives us our top 10 albums. What we've done here is performed an optimized query on our back end so that we can return only the data that we need to our client. Another scenario is sharing albums. And in this example, what we're going to do is combine how we use a global secondary index or a key with how we use our authorization rules. In this example, we're adding an auth rule for groups and we're checking the status field, a new field that we're adding to our type to determine if access is based on public or private fields. We've also added another key attribute here. This is the new global secondary index, which will allow us to query by status, public or private. What this does is allow us to construct another really simple query from our client to list shared albums with the status of public and return them in ascending order. We've actually combined an efficient query using a global secondary index here with an optimized authorization strategy so that only public records are returned back to the client. So there you have it. We've recapped a bit of the Amplify framework and we've explored that GraphQL transform feature. We've shown how we can use data modeling to help with app development and ease client-side development and infrastructure deployment. And we've dived into that model, auth, and key directives to see how we can create a data model that uses secure and highly performant GraphQL APIs. Thanks for joining the session today. I hope it's been useful. And please stick around with us for the next AWS Amplify Days session. Thank you.